the people who have contributed the least to climate change, and that is, you know, people in poverty, uh, marginalised groups and women, uh, are often those that are poised to suffer the most and are suffering the most. But, uh, you know, Australians really understand this and want to make it right, and that's what our research is showing. Well, how much do Australians care about how the government addresses this? Well, our research demonstrated that, you know, a majority of Australians not only recognise that uh, we have an obligation to do more to support poorer countries, especially those in our region, but they also recognise that as a rich nation and a high emitter, there's an obligation to do that. You know, climate change isn't something that respects national borders. Um, so we've also got to make sure that our contribution to dealing with this global problem also thinks beyond uh, Australia's shores. And, uh, you know, that's what the report is telling us. And it's also demonstrating that people think we have an obligation and uh, think we should be doing that. Well, do you think the government is on track to fulfilling its climate obligations, especially uh, to smaller neighbouring countries in the Pacific? Well, our country, neighbouring countries in the Pacific, in many respects, have led the way. You know, the, the call for net zero emissions came out of the Pacific, but they are the countries that are on the front line. And some, such as Kiribati and Tuvalu, you know, their physical existence is really under threat. So they're, you know, they're setting a standard for others to follow. In terms of Australia, you know, I think as we head into COP26, it's great to have a commitment to net zero. Uh, but actually, what's really needed is not just the commitment, but the absolute urgent action uh, and a real case to redouble our efforts by 2030 at least. Every day of inaction, every day where we don't do something that we could do today is going to make the issue of getting to net zero harder and harder and harder. So urgent action is needed now. What specifically do you think Pacific countries will be calling for uh, when these leaders meet at COP26? Well, uh, they'll be calling for uh, rich countries like Australia to pay their fair share. Uh, the fact that rich countries, early industrialised countries, you know, that they had a bit of a head start in dealing with, you know, accessing the world's carbon budget, if you like. So uh, they also have an obligation to contribute more to supporting how this is dealt with on a global basis. For Australia, we and many other Australian NGOs are calling for the Australian government to double its budget commitment between 2020 and 2025 to $3 billion a year, noting that many countries such, such as UK, Canada, the US have already doubled their climate finance commitments. In fact, New Zealand quadrupled theirs or announced the, um, a fourfold increase recently. We're calling on Australia to do that too, but also to progressively increase the contribution uh, by 2030 up to what is the fair share around $12 billion. And how are women impacted by climate injustice, Peter? Well, women are disproportionately impacted by climate injustice. Uh, women are often in roles such as subsistence farming, you know, collecting water uh, and so forth. So many of those roles, many of those livelihoods are increasingly threatened by climate change. Uh, in addition to that, every time there's a climate related disaster, we see an increase in gender based violence. And we also see that, uh, you know, across the world, and including in this region, more women than men are in poverty. So, you know, it's a triple whammy and, you know, when compounded by COVID, but every time there is a, a major crisis, women are up to 14 times, women and children up to 14 times more likely to die or be injured. And that's an unacceptable statistic. And Peter, according to your research, many of us underestimate Australia's contribution to the world's global warming compared to, say, countries like China. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what that t told us, we um, per capita, uh, our emissions is probably twice the per capita emissions of China. And whilst China is obviously a huge country, I think it was telling us that, you know, climate change isn't an issue that's someone else's problem. And there is an underestimation in Australia around our own contribution. And I think... Uh, but also an acknowledgement that we do need to do more. And it's good to see that. I mean, Australians are used to seeing bushfires. They're used to seeing heat waves. So they understand firsthand the impacts of climate change. But they also, Australians believe in a fair go. So, you know, it's reassuring. It's reaffirming to see them also say that we should be doing more to support neighbours, especially those who've contributed the least. Well, just finally, are you hopeful that the summit will yield a more positive, decisive action than we've seen in the past? 
I, I'm always glasses half full. You know, it's great to see net zero commissions, but we are running out of time. Let us be really clear. We are playing catch up uh, and we cannot push things back beyond 2030 if we have the ability and the capacity to do that now. So out of COP26, I want to see not just the commitments, I want them to see them absolutely backed with financing and absolutely backed by immediate urgent action. Peter Walton from CARE, thank you. Thanks for having me.